Uh, okay, um, can you hear me clearly? Can I get some kind of reaction? Great. Uh, so uh, I will be sharing my screen. Uh, just uh, one second. <clears throat> So today, uh, today's tutorial, or this is a continuation of like uh, the morning tutorial, the SQL, <clears throat> and uh, installing a Postgres, I think. So uh, let me just ask, um, how many of you have managed to install Postgres? Like, and like uh, completely understand the tomorrow the. the, more, um, the Morning tutorial. Show of hands. Um, Ed, okay. Uh, Billo, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Um, was that a mistake? Okay. Um, or I, I suppose maybe you're trying to raise your hand. Uh, so did one, uh, any one of you like try and face problem or is it like you haven't tried yet? Your hands again. Okay, uh, Stacy. Um, Good. Okay. So uh, from this, I, I understand that like, uh, like maybe you, uh, not many of you have tried uh, yet. Uh, that's fine. Okay. So um, this tutorial is kind of, is uh, on uh, SQL database. Well, database schema design. So <clears throat> practically, you will need to install Postgres or any other kind of database uh, and and use it to to actually work this out but like this is like a the theoretical part is not um um well relevant to that so it, it's it's sorry it's independent of what you use uh so just let's start i can um to make this a bit in, interactive can this one of you like define what the database schema is. Like, what is your understanding? <laughs> Anyone? No volunteers at all. No one to, wants to take a survey. That you don't need to know exactly, but like, what what is your understanding? Of this? So, uh, if if you have any idea, or like, if you have kind of some kind of have a guess, having a guess is also useful. Okay, Basla. Uh, if the hammer is there, uh, okay, maybe uh, CSA or CSI. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but go ahead or like, uh, yeah, CSI. yeah, CSI. yeah, uh, basically, this saw. Uh, in our database schema, like referring some logical and visual configurations of the inter, the inter uh, relational database because there are a lot of group on the database for to deal with on the uh, configuration and the logical aspects of all the 
configuring the table we are using this a database schema basically focusing on the visual configurations of the relational database focusing on that that's my understanding okay uh well good it's um yes uh, so uh just uh, looking at Muslim's answer, she's, she's, as she says, I think a database schema is a structure for an organized database. Uh, yes, more or less. Okay, so yes, you're both correct. Um, so yeah, so a schema is basically the, the blueprint for the database. Um, it can be like a, a visual, kind of visual structure, but it's uh, basically, um, sorry. Yes, I should I should share my screen, sorry, sorry, so that I can start the presentation. Yeah, please, if you, like, if there's some, if some issue, uh, just open your mic and speak, because I will not be able to see, like, your messages when I'm presenting, just as a note. Just uh, moving ahead to here so as was what said yes so the schema is a blueprint so the skeleton uh this how like it, it should show like how the data is going to be structured in the database that's how it's going to be stored there are like uh, two parts of it that is a physical and logical so the logical schema is like the conceptual um ordering or organization so like uh, how do you define the tables, the fields, or the columns, the relationship, re relationships between tables, and any kind of constraints you need to input to, uh, to implement like um, uh, of course the data you have in your in your database, uh, like uh, you know like there are primary keys, for example, so this is a unique value for each that defines each row in the table. And uh, there are, of course, if you have defining relationship between tables, uh, you have to implement like to tell what should, what is uh, the like uh, the reference, uh, the reference key, and uh, for like uh, that is defining the uh, the primary key and the second, um, uh, uh, which is uh, referencing it or it's uh, connecting the two tables. Uh, the physical database schema is like actually how you store it on desk. So this is not what we are talking about here, but like this is um, like uh, also part the the other kind of database schema. There's a kind of planning. Let's say you are planning basically how you you store your data in your database. Um, okay. So. Um, how you design a database schema this is like uh, how you go about it uh, this is how you have to ensure uh, basic things like uh, that the data is consistent uh, that each uh, re record uh, entry so this is that uh, we're talking here about relational uh, uh, relational databases so here the data is organized in tables and uh, uh, rows and columns and each row each uh, record entry has a distinct primary key, meaning it has like a unique value that defines it. It can be just like a, a number, like one, two, three, or like any kind of uh, unique identity identifier. Um, this is just a, a like this is like the basic for SQL or relational databases um and you have to make sure that you you like all the data is in, in sort so like um you are not missing anything uh of course there are other kinds of databases uh like uh, non-sql databases where like uh, the, the data is not organized in tables and rows for in rows and columns um uh actually let's just um, see how your like um information about this like can you tell me another kind of the da database besides sql uh, sql databases or relational databases can you like, what other kind of databases do you know about 
or let's say what kind of examples of no SQL databases? Like, do you know any? Uh, Hillary? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know of MongoDB, which is a no SQL database. Uh, you can organize, stuff. I mean, data in kind of objects. Like yeah. Well, it's uh, okay. Yes, that's good. So yeah, MongoDB is a, is a, a specific kind of uh, tool, but like uh, the database there, it's a uh, it's a uh, okay. Dawit, yes, yeah, yes. So the answer is correct. Yes, that's one of the kind. Uh, Dawit, go okay. ahead. Relational database. So yeah, one. I'm asking about non-relational databases, so other kind of databases. No scale, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so other kind of databases that includes, as I said, like here the the databases, SQL databases are. Uh, yes. So no SQL databases can be video. Um, audio etc yes yeah, so yeah of course you can when you store this kind of data uh, okay um so yeah so the kinds uh, there are like um of course there are several like uh tools you use to build the database so mongodb is one of those uh, like uh, when you store video and audio yes so, so the kind of data you have defines for you what kind of database you can use also. Uh, so yeah, so the mission here is correct. So, but the kinds, the types of NoSQL databases include document, uh, document bases, document databases, which the data there is stored in documents instead of like rows and columns. Um, uh, another, someone else who wants to answer, sorry. Uh, now, what do you, okay. Column based, yes, correct. That's another kind. Uh, there are other like a two, two key value, exactly. I, there is one uh, one left. Um, she's graph databases, basically. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, who's talking? Okay. Right. So, you got that. You get it. So that's all. So the difference there, like um, uh, in key value, I, I mean, this is like so kind of obvious, like uh, you have uh, like the data there is not installed in rows and columns, but rather you have a key and value for each, uh, for each uh, entry basically. So you, you define the entry by a key and, um, uh, and so the value can vary. So what is for relation databases and let me just uh, just look at it so just these are just example we have a, a row and, uh, row and columns so each entry has the same number of columns that is like a requirement basically so you have to have all the same columns in key value in document you don't have each entry doesn't have doesn't necessarily have the same uh, number of columns or the same number of uh, fields defining it um and so and oh, or for example graph databases has this like includes some kind of connections um uh, which is like um, think about the graph and the, in the graph you have like uh, um nodes and connections so that's uh, like wh why that that is useful for particular kind of uses um uh Okay, but uh, our focus here is on the simplest kind or the SQL databases, which are relational made of rows and columns. And each row like defined by a unique value, like an ID here. So usually we call this, that this is a primary key, is what it's called. Uh, okay, anyway, this is good. Uh, sorry so yeah so we are here at an example uh just looking at this so i have two tables here let's say like this is uh tables for um uh a social media website 
I have like a users, like uh, a users table. So these are like uh, users with their emails and when they created their account, this is the value like in this table. And the post table is this one have like the posts that were, were published by each user. So here, well, the users table, it has a, a unique entry for each unique user. In the post table, there will be an entry, a unique entry for each post, not for each user. So a user here will appear multiple times because they, they are able to publish multiple times. So the primary key, key here, or let me ask you, what, which, will, which one of these columns will be the primary key? As I defined it. Yes, can someone answer quickly? Yes, yeah, Sheila. Um, the username ID. Okay, user so ID. user ID, that is incorrect. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think someone in the, so, all right. Mahbuba, uh, is that correct? Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, hello. Hello, yeah, I can hear you. Mm, the post ID. Yeah, the post ID, that's correct. So uh, as I said, uh, the primary key, it has to be a unique value that identifies each row. And uh, in the post table, what's the, is, what is the, like uh, a user ID it will appear multiple times. For example, here, for example, we have Bob is number two, like ID, user ID two. If you look at the user ID, Bob is appearing two times because like this uh, person post uh, had like posted on the website two times. So this is not a primary key. A primary key cannot have like, um, it has to be, have a unique value for each row. And this one doesn't have like these two rows have the same value for user ID, but the post ID is unique for each row. So this is the one that identifies each row has a unique value for each row. So this is the primary key. But this user ID is referencing this one, right? So it has to have the same value. If this is a post by Bob, it has to have two. If this is post by Charlie, it has to have the, the Charlie ID, user ID, which is three, referencing this. They have to be equal, right? Or have to have to be like, uh, I, I shouldn't have, if, I, if I, for example, if I have uh, only five users, for my social media uh, website. I have like a really, um, my social media website is not really successful. I only have five people using it. Um, I cannot have a value here that exceeds uh, five. For example, I cannot have a, a value that appears here that is 10, for example, because it's not referencing anything. It's not correct. I shouldn't have a value that is not valid. I shouldn't have like a minus one or like um, a value that doesn't appear here. It has to be exactly the values that appear here and nothing more. And to ensure this, I have to use some kind of constraint. Anyway, I will say that this like uh, this uh, table, this column is referencing this one. And so when I design my scheme, I have to say this, I have to implement this constraint. like. I have to say like this column is referencing this one. So it has to have values that are consistent with this, with this um, column. Uh, are there a question? I think I heard someone. Um, okay, what scenario can we have two values being the primary key? Um, uh, okay, so two values, I can have two, I can have two columns uh, like defining the primary key. Um, okay, so basically, let's say instead of uh, of a user ID, which is a number, a unique number. Here I'm using. Suppose I took, uh, I allowed um, the for my social media. Uh, sorry. Suppose, yeah, okay. Um, for example, I, I guess I'm trying to, to think of an example here, a scenario where I can you have this. Uh, another thing that is unique in this table, instead of in this, uh, 
besides the user ID is the email, for example, because like not two users have the same email. Okay, so I don't allow any pe person to use uh, like the same email twice, or uh, like for two different users. So it will be a unique one. So instead of the user ID being the primary key, it could be the email, or I can use the both of them together. Like this is allowed because they are both like unique, or it could be like not not either not each value is unique, but together they are unique. For example, let's say I allow in my social media website, I allow people to use like I allow you to use uh, an an email twice. So like with the same email, you can create multiple accounts. Okay. But uh, let's say, so let's say Alice um, using the same uh, email um, created a new account that is called Alice2. Uh, okay. um, in that case, the email column will not be unique. The username column might not be unique also. I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. I shouldn't say that. But okay. So the username. Uh, column comment, it will not be unique as well, but together they should be unique. So when you use the same email to create a new account, it has to have a new username. And then in that case, the, the, the two of them together will be unique. As, as long as the value of the uh, value of the two is unique for each row, I can bo use both columns as the primary key. But as we'll see later on, this is not, um, in the design, this is not ideal. So we should have a primary key that is on one, one column. But in principle, it could be, it could be multiple columns together, creating a unique value for each row, and that is a, a primary key. Okay, did, did I answer your question, Hilary? So the Sheila was the question, sorry. Yes, it answers, thank you. Yeah, all right, uh, so, um, um, all right, let's, let me go forward, but, and then I will go back to the questions. Okay. Just so that we, uh, we don't lose uh, time. Uh, I'm just doing like looking at my example users and post table. I can represent this here in, in what is it called an entity relationship diagram. So I have like my user table, which is uh, made of ID, username, email, created as, and this is a primary key. It's like referenced here by like a key, small key emoji, or um, I don't know, it's a, a I, um, icon, a key icon. Here in the post uh, table, I have also ID, title, body, user ID, created as. This is just like the columns. The type of data in each column is defined, like it's an integer for the ID. The title is a character, so it's Barker um, type uh, that type. Um, I have also timestamps for create that. Um, and then I have this relationship that the user ID is referenced in the post column. Here is represented by a one to many relationship, meaning that I have a unique value here for each row. But here, like uh, um, as the same user ID can appear multiple times. So this is a relationship is called one to many. And uh, we'll see maybe in a demo a little bit. So uh, you can create this entity relationship diagram. Of course, you can just uh, draw them yourself. But there are this, this useful, um, easy to use uh, websites that you can actually create this entity relationship diagram there. It's a visual representation, and from them you can also get um, a schema um, uh, SQL uh, uh, file. Also, it's uh, like you can just like after you draw the diagram, you can actually just download the file. It will be easy to see, or basically is exactly creating for you the schema SQL um, uh, file or like you, you the SQL, what I'm saying, talking about schema SQL, what I'm saying is the SQL uh, code that you, you need to create these tables and with them, the constraints that you need to implement all of that. Um, okay. Uh, let me just um, mention here the, some of the best practices like uh, following uh, naming standards. For example, when you name tables, it has to be like a, 
um, all small um, and also like uh, not use plural but a, a single um, singular should be singular like uh, instead of uh, I should call actually this the user and this is post um, so I think this is like uh, their name is standards this is like a something that you can keep in mind. But uh, another thing that you have to, like this is more important, to, to reduce the redundancy with normalization. So uh, normalization will explain a little bit in a, a later slide, but this is just in practical, practically, the same data usually you can store in multiple ways. Maybe this is not, uh, you can tell me like, for example, in our example, we have users, some posts, it doesn't seem like we can always uh, like store them in two tables. But if this is not a given, you can always choose how many tables you can include in your data. You can always put your data in a different, uh, like um, you choose to split your data in more tables or uh, collect them all together in one table. For example, here I can actually put this, all this information in one table. Why, why do we have to split it into? Okay, why? Like I could actually put uh, all this information, like I, I include just the username here, the email, and the, that the, the user account was created at the, then I just add like three other um, columns right here, and I have just one table, why should I have it in, three, in two? Um, here is the question, think about it. Like um, if you have an answer, just like write it in the, in the, uh, in the chat box. Uh, uh, so the question is why, why shouldn't I just put these two, uh, like uh, the information in these two tables is this in just one? Like what, what, what am I, am I gaining from putting them in two tables? Um, uh, okay. So, so this is what I hear. Like uh, another thing that we have to keep in mind is to have some documentation when creating the schema, so that like this is always documentation is always great when you are collaborating with other people, uh, which is always the case when you are working in a company or something. And even if you're working alone, because when you go back to your like uh, the code you wrote like a month ago, you have to have documentation so that you understand what you work doing so okay uh this is all like protect the the integrity the, um, the integrity of the data uh, by like uh, implementing um rules that are, like not null so uh, when you define a column in a table you can define it as not null that it cannot be empty so a username for example cannot be empty so that when you someone is entering the data if they have an empty, em this field is empty, they will get an error. It will not work. Uh, so that you're protecting the, like, uh, you are not getting any data that is missing, important data, that critical data that's not, it's not missing. You can define the string length, you can size the foreign keys and, and primary keys, as we said before. Like, uh, you can also implement constraint on possible values, like this a table cannot have negative values, for example, for integer all of this you can implement from the start uh, put as many as possible or like as many as appropriate like anything that is necessary for your data you have to include in when you're creating the schema um, uh, so okay so these are like uh, some of the best practices there are like types of schema so going back to my question uh okay so let me see uh i see like um uh so the answers to my question i think abu Bakr is saying uh it's so that we can scale it when we need new features and this is saying the void duplication for jolly is saying for easy querying and reducing redundancy uh yeah Hillary is also saying repeated, in, uh, avoid repeating and hence reduce uh, storage cost. So yes, so all of these, almost all of these are correct. So when we split our data in two, in more and more tables, we are reducing the redundancy. And when we, 
with uh, basically the repetition. Going back to my example, right? So going back to our example here, let's say if I put the data into one table, see here, for example, I have these two posts that are made by the same person, which is Bob. So for if I include everything in one table, I will have to have here the name of the user, the email of the user, right? And when the account was created at these three tables. And for each one of them, I will be repeating the same value. So I will have Bob, Bob, uh, the Bob's email, and the time when it was created. So these values will be repeated, right? This is a redundancy. And for that, so here I only had this user ID repeated so with this one field. There I will have extra three uh, fields repeated. And this repetition, this redundancy is what I am getting rid of. Uh, uh, I'm getting rid of it when I'm, I'm putting the same as this uh, information in a different table. Okay. Um, um, I could also, if, uh, sometimes I can split my tables in a way that doesn't reduce any redundancy. For example, if I put actually here, I have user ID and username in this table. Suppose I choose to put this, I delete this to two, two columns and put it in a different table. So I say like for each user, I'm putting the username in a table. I say like this is the username table, and then I will say like a, a email table, and then I will use a user a user ID and email, right? But then I'm not reducing any redundancy. I'm just in um, because the email doesn't repeat for each user. I'm just like uh, creating extra tables for no reason, basically. So that is not a good use of my of, of that. Um, so I'm just I'm just giving you examples so that you understand that there are things that you have to think about when you're creating the, the like your tables, okay? Actually, when it comes to like, um, let's look at the schema here, or this, um, this is types of schemas. Um, let me jump ahead a, a little bit and just define the normalization for you. So normalization is like, uh, like formal is informal is just how you reduce the redundancy in your database. Um, so the goal of normalization is to reduce the redundancy as much as possible. Uh, usually in a normalization, what you're doing is that you're dividing your data into more and more tables, okay? And connecting the tables with the relationships, uh, okay. Uh, there are levels of normalization. You can normalize to the first level. You can normalize the second level. Um, you can have your own, if when you have all your data in one table, this is just unnormalized form. When you start to reduce the redundancy one by one, uh, then you are just increasing your like normalization level or like uh, going from uh, unnormalized form to the first normal form to the second normal form and so on and so forth. The basic thing in the, uh, the first uh, normal form is that each record should be unique. So this is just the basic SQL database. So this is a, what, this is what, what you start with. Uh, sorry, no, not the first. The, what you start with is a normalized form so that each record should be uh, unique. But the extra thing for the first normal form is that each cell holds one value. So, it's possible that in one column you can have like multiple values, like multiple examples of things, something like you have like anything, any thing that can be put in one column. Um, the first normal form, you have to reduce this by putting just each cell has only one value. So um, um, at the second uh, normal form, in that case, it's going to be like uh, all your all your um, columns have to depend on the primary key. So there is no uh, not only that the whole row doesn't repeat. You what you also that for no column the value repeats, and uh, so on and so forth. We're going into normalization. Um, so 
with normalization, what you're doing is that you're reducing redundancy and saving space, storage space. The cons, however, is when you're reading from your table, when you want to, um, to get information, you have to, especially when you want to do analysis, more tables, that means you have to use more joints between your tables. And this means that your queries will be, will take longer time to, to run. So when you have all your data in one, in one table, when you, when you're analyzing, this is perfect because you're only reading that table. You have all the information there. You don't need to look at joining different tables. Um, uh, but when you are entering your data in your, in your tables, it's like uh, easier when you have multiple tables because some, uh, most of the time you'll be updating only one of these small tables, not all of them. And also because when you are splitting your data in multiple tables, you can have these constraints that need to be, um, uh, need to be satisfied. And then you have more checks on your data that you're entering, so you, there, there are less uh, chance for errors. So um, just I'm going to, so yeah, just from this, uh, more normalized uh, is useful for when you are entering, when you're doing more of um, right queries, you're writing, you're updating your, your data, and less normalization is used when you are doing analysis. So uh, that uh, basically means that when you're doing all up, which is online analysis processing, you, you need less normalization. When you're doing all TP, you, it's better to have more normalization. So depending on what you are using your database more for, okay? uh so this is just here like how we decide to whether to normalize our tables and this depends on what we are using it is it read or write intensive the our uses then i'm going back to just to show you like the types of schemas we have for example we have the star schema uh the star schema is normalized to the one form okay so usually you have like one one table fact table and then uh one dimension so basically, uh, here I have an example of like, uh, let's see, it's uh, uh, like, uh, let's say this is a, the database for uh, a bookshop. And it, I have a table for book sales. And it has a sales ID, the book ID, the time, the store, the sale amount, the quantity. Okay. Uh, the sale ID is a primary key. But then I have book, store, and ta and and um, book and store, uh, and time. Basically, I and I can create the information for a book, for the store, for the time are in and are stored in a different table. So for each book, I have a title, author, and publisher. But I put this in one in one table instead of having it because sales. Of course, I will sell the same book multiple times, right? So instead of having this information repeated here inside just one table, I will put it in a different table. Uh, for each store, also we have multiple. Uh, there are formation for each store where it is, uh, where in, which is the address, the city, the state, the country. All of that, instead of repeating it in one just table, I will have it on a separate table and connect them like um, the store ID is connected to the store ID here, the book ID is connected to the book ID here. This is just a ridiculous thing, but I have like the time I can have it like um, as a day, month, quarter, and year. Uh, I can have them in a separate table, of course. Like this information, when I'm, I'm when doing analysis, is useful to have like uh, the quarter like in a uh, in a separate column so that I can uh, like group my data regarding that. Anyway, so this is a static schema. That other kind of schema is a snowflake schema. This is like an extension of the star schema, just extra one dimension. And the dimension tables are there. So here the the first the fact table is normalized. Here the dimension tables are normalized. This looks like this. This is the same the same database as before. But what I did here is that for example, for each before we had the book 
it has an author, a publisher, right? Uh, and genre. And instead of having this in one table, I will just put an ID and I define a publisher and author in a different table. Think again that for a book, a, an author can have multiple books. A publisher can have multiple, uh, multiple uh, publishes for multiple authors and multiple books. And a general, of course, would have many books, each genre. So I'm normalizing the, the book table from before. I normalized it extra by adding extra tables. And the same I did for stores and for time. Uh, even more so I you see like I went from like having one table to four tables now I have like I don't know how many of them are here like these are 13 tables now the amount actually the storage is less because anything that is repeating uh, um, uh, like um, is, is, is put in a different table but as you see if I want to like do some analysis on what kind of genera was was published in a in a what in a quarter in a particular year and compare it for multiple years i have to join all of these tables together like one two three four five six so if i'm doing analysis this is a nightmare right to do i want my query i can write the query but the query is going to like take longer time if i have everything in one table it will be easier so uh, okay this is just like the basic about this um okay any questions so far let's see go back here um i hope this was clear uh yeah i went uh, with extra to give you an example but like if you have any any questions everything is clear i will assume if there are no questions i will assume everything is clear Okay, uh, Jolly is asking about the use cases. As I mentioned, um, uh, you use this, it defines the use of a schema depending on um, like what you are like, sorry. So what you are doing using your database for. So if you are doing any kind of read, write intensive, the more normalized, the better. If you are doing read intensive, if you are doing analysis, is the less normalized the better. So it's like uh, there is no like uh, exact rule, but whenever using your database for analysis, let's say let's use your case in in this challenge, the data for you is already there. It's not. It's not. You are not updating the data. You are not entering new new entries. Right. You are not tasked with with uh, keeping track of what new published data right this is data that is already collected from the like the past from last year is already there what you're using your data for is analysis right so for you you it's not necessary for you or it's not useful for you to normalize your data more because what you are doing on it you are analyzing it so in in your queries are you using joins or not if you're using joins, uh, that means that you don't need extra normalization. Um, and the opposite is, is correct. So if you are doing up, updating your data, um, say in the case again of articles, if you if you are, for example, this is not your case, but if you are asked, tasked by actually updating the data on the new articles, you would you would you would you'd want your data to be normalized even more so that you are not you are updating as as little as uh, as as few number of tables as possible. So, for example, in the in the data set that that database you have or the data sets you have, you have article basically a table that have information about the articles. You have information about domains, and uh, the clear country, and then the traffic of these domains, right? So when you are including new articles, you don't want to update the domain table, right? The, do, the domain location table. So 
um, you don't need to have it on all in one in one table. The the more split the the, the better. Is that clear, um, Jolly? Um, okay, uh, Hillary is asking what basis can we use to choose a schema type? And in the task we're given, uh, okay, uh, um, are we to use a specific schema type? Uh, okay, this is a judgment call on on your on your on your part um so in basically you can just uh, like uh if you get my call on on your part to to how how you define your schema exactly but you're not tasked by choosing a particular schema a particular schema type um um you are just uh, like uh, basically what you're tasked with is that you want to design a schema basically to uh, and input uh, the, your, the, your data, the data you have into a database um, so you can you have the three tables you can choose to keep them as three tables you can choose to split them but this is like counter into it's not this is counter to what you are trying to use this database for because you are you are you doing analysis um you can decide to join your tables together but this is also you have to judge but like if you want to have like a really one table of all of this information or to have it split uh, as they are three or more it's like depending on like your judgment um just to see uh and like uh so abdurrahman have a question abraham sorry I don't know why it's right on the Abraham. I'm sorry, my bad. It was an accident. I don't <laughs> have any questions. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, okay. So, uh, um, there is no other questions. Just let's see how to design. So, one of these, uh, uh, sorry, I'm still sharing my screen. So, great. So, one of these, uh, Website that was like uh, referenced to you to create an ERD diagram is this one, it's DB diagram, and you can see like here like you have uh, users post and follows. It's like a similar to what I was uh, the example I got you, uh, social media account, a uh, social media website, and you can see like how you define like each table here like uh, the id the primary key the user i so this is the one and then you can also like the the relationships between like each each one each uh, like uh, the each the tables together so for your case let's say like this i was like uh doing this earlier so um One second. All right. Uh, so, uh, okay. Um, all right. So, I have, for example, we have, I don't, I called it article, but okay. This is the first that, uh, let me just see. I hope that I'm not confusing you even more. Anyway, I have this data, so this is a table. So I'm, I'm choosing here to just uh, like keep them as they are, three tables. Uh, I'm just defining the schema for that. Um, all right, sorry. I want to close it, but okay, fine. Um, so I call this article, so I'm including here the fields here. So um like i have like an article id source id source name published at but okay i can include all of the other ones like um author title like all of this so um okay you'll do this like this is a, a text a title the same right so bakar kind and you'll see like uh so i'm getting an error here 
Okay. So you'll see like that right away. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm getting the table in updated. And you will do this for the rest of them. Uh, include all the all the fields that you have in your data, right? And make sure to like uh, to define the type correctly. Um, okay, and the other the other table for me is the one like source common name, location, and country. This is the domain location. So domain location, source common name location and country and what i did is that i said for my case that the article source name this domain common name is referencing this one actually it's the opposite so which one has the one okay so it's actually correct so uh, like uh, in a domain location this will be a primary key let's call it here primary sorry primary key right so in the domain location table the source common name is the primary key which is it's a unique value for each uh for each for each um row but you can also like if you decide maybe you want to add an id actually a number like let's say source uh, um, uh, um source common or what well, let's say call it an id yeah. ID as an integer and call this a primary key instead. That's up to you uh, to do that. Okay, can add just a, a, a number, just one to just number them and add that as, a, as an ID. And then, like uh, this, so this field here is referencing the sorry, the source name here is referencing the one here. So, one here is like uh, correspond to many that appear here, right? Because it appears multiple times. And uh, you can hear uh, what else you can do. Um, basically, you can add notes. Uh, for example, this location is um, like it's a short code, like I can say that here. Um, the country. It's an extra if I want. Very short. Good. And to appear here, it's an explanation of the field. And you can add them like if you want to all fields if you want. Uh, so I can add the other table because there is another one. The traffic data, right? So I'll we'll create the other table. So, uh, okay. So let's say call it traffic. Sorry. Right. And the uh, columns there are um, so global rank, the domain. Uh, okay. Say. So let me get your help here. So, what is the primary key in this table would be? Anyone who have an answer, please open your mic and speak, because we are running out of time. So, so the domain is um, is a uh, is that right? It is the domain. Yes, yeah, the domain is the primary key, right? Right. Okay. And uh, let me just add another field just to make it. Uh, I'm not going to add all of them, but uh, what is is your rank? uh global rank okay so uh sorry no, i don't know why it's say global rank so what is the type of this one what's the type of that of the of the data for this one global <laughs> an integer or is it an integer Okay. Uh, all right. So, and this domain does it reference the source name also from from the domain location? Anyway, I, to add this, I wanted to explain how to add this reference here, so we can see it. All right. I can add the reference. 
at the end and say that uh, uh, the traffic domain uh, is referencing again um, uh, what is it? Is it domain location? Source common name. I don't know. Uh, I'm not even sure that it's correct, but okay. Um, what am I getting a wrong one here? Okay. Uh, so if I want to put that one in the middle, let's see. Right, so I'm having like a, I'm just making, I'm, I'm, I'm probably making a mistake because like uh, um, this is just an example. So, but you can see like I got the domain location, the article and traffic and they are like uh, the domain common name is the one that's connecting these two. But you can, I, as you saw, so I can actually re reorder my tables by how I enter them, uh, defining the constraint here or like uh, this is just like the primary of foreign keys like how to connect them and the, after you end like you have this nice good nice visual uh you can actually export uh this value like i already um yeah just like if you sign in actually create come some kind of an account here you can get this. This is not. This is not necessary. You can just write it yourself. You can just copy this and uh, write it in the correct form for your case. But uh, what is easy here to do is that you can actually get um, um, a table. So this will be take. So let me just show you an example I had earlier. It will create for you this. Um, sorry. Uh, this one it will it will give you the actual sql um code that you need to create the table so this is from the demo they had so this is the code for this one so i had you remember i have the post uh, taking time sorry users post and follow and this is like how it was created i exported it and i got this sql file which like it has a SQL code to create this like follows users and posts with the constraint I have on them, right? Um, it, uh, it is like, uh, I'm not sure how to do this uh, actually in this website in particular, but uh, it's adding the foreign, the relationships as like an alteration afterward. But of course you can actually do this when you are creating the post itself by saying like, um, say, uh, sorry, this user ID, sorry. So instead of writing it here, so I want to say like um, this one, right? The table post uh, as a user ID uh, is a foreign key referencing the user ID in users. And instead of doing that, I will just write it here. Uh, reference, references, users, users, uh, users ID, sorry instead of having this so this will do will be doing the same thing from the start but anyway and again uh, other concerns you can add like you can say something it has to be not null so so i can add like not null here oh i think okay. uh, this is like we'll, we'll make sure that when any data is added to these users. If is, this value is null, it will you will get an error, stuff like that. So, uh, in the end, what you want is uh, an SQL here that we will use, as you as explained to you earlier, how to like uh, create a database and like um, populate it, right? So, uh, in Python, using SQL Alchemy, for example, you can create your database. Um, you can reference basically the, uh, the, the SQL file, right? Uh, to create the database based on that uh, schema file, right? So you have this uh, like a uh, Python code um, using, um, you can use SQL Alchemy and then 
of course you can add the data from from a data frame um, easily so um, so 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 add so just uh, just want to show you like can easily do like uh, when you create um, a connection to your database and then uh, you can easily use because it's in pandas very easily if you have a data frame you can just use to sql and um, create ending genes this is a function from like a tool from sql alchemy and uh, you can basically uh, load uh, the data frame into a table there or actually create a table from it so you don't you actually need to have the table already defined for you anyway so i suppose this is something that you went over earlier um if not uh, i'll just give you some kind of a, like an overall um picture so any questions because you are over time i'm sorry um uh so any any further questions so like okay, let's take like a couple of minutes to answer if any final questions and then we can end this session um so any questions when there are no questions i assume everything is clear uh, okay so uh okay i suppose everything is clear uh everyone's saying is that so thank you uh, can we do a drag and drop on the side? I'm I'm actually not sure, but I it's uh, uh, it has like a, a a function of importing. You have to actually look this. Uh, uh, I, I'm not sure if it has a drag and drop actually functionality, but there are multiple multiple websites. Probably you, if even if this one particular doesn't have that, you will have like other ones that please that do. Some are easier, some are not. This is just the one that I happen to use. And once you are more more like um, comfortable with SQL, actually, uh, these websites maybe like are not really a great, not a great, but it's not um, it's not adding that much. So you can like when you are able to visualize this yourself, you might not even need that. But it's just a nice. Uh, thing because you can visualize it and it actually kept checking for you showing you if you have errors um okay someone I like our bucket is giving you like a lucid chart might have that one check it out so send yeah as i said if it even if this one in particular doesn't have that functionality probably other ones have it and it's just an easy thing you don't need to actually use this it's just an easier like it's like it might make it easier for you to visualize um, the, the, um, I'm, I'm just saying that you are not required to create an ERD for this particular uh, challenge. Uh, I I don't think so, but uh, you have to sorry you have to check the requirement actually the deliverable to see if you are required to do that. But it is a good thing if you do it. Maybe take a screenshot or like download the, the like the diagram itself, include it in your report. It's a, it's a nice thing to have, um, even if it's not required. I'm just saying that using this website is not necessarily uh, or not usually required. Anyway, anyway, um, uh, any other questions? Uh, uh, if not, uh, I will stop here because I went over time. Uh, thank you everyone for being here. Um, and uh, okay. if more other questions. Uh